England versus Slovenia. England drew nil-nil with Slovenia. They still managed to finish top of the group. <laughs> I don't even know how. I don't even know how. Anyway, they won the first game and they have scored a grand total of two goals in this tournament so far. One of the tournament favorites. Before we continue, guys, revolution shall be televised. My people in Kenya, we need to keep fighting. Um, people have lost lives fighting for what they believe in. The young guys have really shown us, like, yo, this is the way to go. So just a big shout out to all the young guys who are just letting their voices be heard. So, yeah. We're here tomorrow, back in the streets. Um, so, England. England drew nil-nil with um what's their name slovenia guys i'm a bit disoriented you just need to understand like it's been it's been a hectic few days um and just doing things with a heavy heart knowing what's happening so yeah i'm just trying to i'll just try and and, and remember what <laughs> happened yesterday during this game because we're trying to watch it and also just try and keep up with what's happening in our own country so um yeah england Man, Southgate, Southgate. Well, let's just let's just start with the positives. Um, Trent didn't start the game. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but what we had is even when he came on, Trent has created the most chances for this England team in the entire tournament. So I'm like, okay, now I I I, I sort of see where you're going with Trent because you need chances to be created, but. <laughs> This team just has no balance. This team has no style of play. They have no balance. They have no drive moving forward. And I'm saying all of these things as someone who's just more disappointed than anything because we really thought England is going to be that team, right? Like having Kane, Saka, Foden up front, um, Jude in midfield, like, Southgate is the only person who has managed to make me see flaws in players that I didn't even know they had, you know? Like, let me just speak about my Arsenal players. He's made Declan Rice look so average, and he's made me realize, like, there are certain areas in the field I don't want Declan Rice to be getting the ball, especially when we're attacking, because he just doesn't look comfortable, or it's just a part of his game he has not developed. To be fair to him, he's much better than he was at West Ham, just because it's growth, right? It's... It's natural growth as a footballer. The older you get and when you move to a team that, when you come from a team that never used to have the ball to a team that ha is a position-based game, your first year of, 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 of going to such a team, you, you, like you'll see, you'll see the, there's, there's places where he struggles. There's times where I saw it, to be honest, like when he's attacking in the left half space. But if you realized one of the best, the, when Arsenal were really, really scoring goals, he would not be part of the attack from the back. And Jorginho used to play a lot of those games. And there's a reason why Jorginho played those games because that build-up play from the back is so not, comes so naturally to Jorginho, that trequartista role. Um, and then he plays more of a box-to-box. -box. Man, like, Southgate has just managed to look everyone, look, make everyone look average. Trippier, one thing that was very obvious to me in the Slovenia game Think about this Slovenia, uh, the England Slovenia game is that um, the the broadcasters decided they're going to do a wider angle more than any other game I've seen. So if you look at the, if you look watch the game again, it was such a wide angle, which is so good for us guys who are trying to break down the game tactically, right? <laughs> Slovenia would overload the right side, England's right side, every single time, and they would force England to go and play on the left side, knowing very well. There is no one of the on the England side who's going to break down the wing and cross the ball because that is not their game, right? <laughs> on Saka's side, they're overloading Saka's side. Saka was never getting space, um, but that also that's also because they know Saka is a threat cutting in. He can beat someone one on one, and if like if if he gets the chance and Walker overlaps, Walker can overlap and put a swing across in with his right foot. That doesn't happen on the left side because Trippier is not left footed. So he can't go out on the wing. You can't, or he can't overlap and then you give him the ball and he crosses, he whips the ball into his left foot. He keeps on cutting back to his right foot. And then at some point in the game, it's like they realize that. Then they push Foden to the wing. Instead of keeping him there for like 10, 15 minutes, let's see what he can do. Five minutes later, he brings him back to the middle of the park. So I'm like, dude, what, like, what, like what's happening? What's the thinking? First 20 minutes, the passes are not going to fit. 
Like the players are just not. It, they also look lost. Like to be honest, they just look lost. There were so many missed passes in this game, losing position in the middle of the park. Like, it's it's man. This England team is just is just hard. It's just a hard watch. Um, then we have uh, this guy on. There's a there's a journalist on on X who did like a whole video on how the players that play for the big teams because the big teams more or less are capable of playing from the back because they have to play from the back because most of the time they're playing against low blocks. Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal, United to an extent. Um, so yeah, let's just say those big teams and Chelsea as well at some point, right? Some they, Like when they're playing the smaller teams, they always, they're playing against a team that might, I mean, it will press them higher than it, than they press other teams, but they still respect teams like Burnley, Bournemouth will respect Chelsea because even though they're not in on form, um, they have players who can break down one on one. Palmer and those likes of people. Anyway, my point is, this journalist did a thread, and in this thread, he took maybe six between six and eight scenarios when Pickford had the ball. Whenever Pickford had the ball, the players who play for these clubs, Declan Rice, John Stones. Um, Phil Foden and Saka to an extent they would always come short for the ball Kyle Walker they will always come short for the ball because it's in their DNA right they've played like this the whole season it's in their DNA to come short play from the back they are brave enough because Ateta Pep Klopp uh, Pochettino they will coach their players to be, you have to be brave on the ball. This is one thing, even in the Amazon documentaries, even in the in Pep's documentaries that you see, being brave on the ball is key for you to be a great club in the Premier League, right? So all these players would come short for the ball. But Pickford, being someone who's used to play playing at Everton, um, and no offense to Everton, Everton have their own style of play, but... Sean Dyche does he's not a risk taker like that in his own in his own third, right? <laughs> they don't make those short passes. So those are things that don't come naturally to Pickford. And that is why I was advocating for, even though I know it will never happen, for Ramsdale to start, right? Pickford has been number one this whole time, whatever, and Southgate has his loyalties. So we understand it's never going to happen. <laughs> Pickford is the better shot stopper. We'll give him that. Pickford has been playing the whole season. He was only second to Raya in clean sheets in the Premier League. If you then bring someone who, because at the end of the day, Ramsdale, the first season, the season before this last one where he didn't play, he was playing from the back the entire time. He didn't do it well, but he was brave enough to actually attempt it. And he it gives those players confidence and it makes the opponent, more importantly, it makes the opponent want to press higher and it creates gaps in the middle of the park, right? Pickford just boots the ball long every single time. And then you boot it long to someone like Saka, who's not the biggest guy in the world, right? So, again, Saka wants the ball to fit. You give Saka the ball to fit, he's, he becomes like a giant. He's like a big dude, right? Like he's a, he's a, he's a bigger-than-life personality. You give Foden the ball on, by, to his feet, bigger-than-life personality. Now he expresses himself on the ball. The moment you want to, look like, <laughs> to like punt the ball to the two of them, their size, their their small stature now comes out. Now you see how small they are because they're constantly competing in the air with big, bigger defenders. And so basically you're playing to their weaknesses. You're playing, you're constantly playing to Foden's weaknesses, constantly playing to Saka's weaknesses. Um, Kane, like, I, I don't even know. Kane, Kane is... Even Kane has managed to look average in this team. Like, Kane is the one, used to be that one person who, like, you know, like, he would find a way to always shine in this team. So, man, like, England is so disappointing. I don't even know where to start, man. Like, I'm, I'm actually just disappointed. Um, I'm more disappointed in... I'm more disappointed in the... I'm more disappointed in the lack of... In the incompetence <laughs> that this entire coaching staff is showing. And if they dare give this guy a contract extension, it's becoming obvious. You can see it in their body, um, whatever's, like in the, in how they are. Like just their body language is not it. Like the, it's just not it. So anyway, they managed to qualify for the round of sixteen. They're probably going to play a team like Netherlands or something. And actually, let's see who they're playing. They're going to play number three in Group D, E O F, I believe. Um, number three in group D, E, O, F. 
which means it could be Netherlands or it could be Group E has Group E we still don't know who's going to be third because everyone is tied on three points and then Group F is probably Czechia. So they are going to play one of Czechia, one of Romania, Belgium, Slovakia, Ukraine or the Netherlands. So yeah. England man, I'm just disappointed. Um okay, I've said so much about England. Let me talk about Slovenia. Slovenia. Benjamin Sheshko. They, they they need to go, it's with Slovenia the game plan is very clear. Find moments where you're going to counter England. Benjamin Sheshko is is they get that tend to get him into those dangerous positions. It's it's not working but um at least they're trying. They're not they're not making they're not forcing it. So when if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't come, it doesn't come. And I mean, they're showing more tactical discipline than England at this point. Again, my my bowler, one of my players of the tournament, Kanichnik, is the right back for Slovenia. He's been for me, he's been one of the best defenders. Actually, attacking full full backs or attacking defenders um in this entire squad. So in this entire tournament. So he 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 had a really good game. I think Yanza had a good game as well, especially defensively, because he was going up against Saka and that entire right wing of England. Did well to nullify Walker as well. Mlaka really supported him well on that side. Um, and they still stick to playing with the front two. Um, the one thing, again, that Slovenia did that I was actually quite impressed with is that they, they look like they play with a 4-4-2, but then there are moments where they actually have a back five, right? And then in this back five, so someone like Vlaka or Elchnik will join the, uh, uh, or Cherin would join the, the back line. They form a five. Then the three in midfield stay super compact. Again, they're just forcing England to the right side because they know to their left side. Well, Slovenia's right side and England's left side because they know England are not going to do anything there. So they stay super compact in the middle, the three of them. The five are forming at the back and then you have Sheshko up front just trying to chase the ball. And somehow they kept on winning the ball. Like that's the thing that did make sense to me. And yeah, tactical discipline. They really kept to it. Again, you can blame, you can fault them for packing the bus. You can say, oh, they're not attacking. But they don't have the players. It's not in their skill set. They actually can't harm this England team just from playing the ball and being great, you know, ball players. Like that's that's not who they are. They know who they are. They're living by their means and they managed to grind out a boring draw this is what the coach wants like make it boring make it a slug fest make the england fans turn against their own manager they were throwing uh bottles at them you know slovenia slovenia actually celebrated this uh thing at the end like they had just won but also shout out to them because it was their independence day so for them to pull off such a big result on their independence day i think it was a big deal um they finished third in the group, um, which more or less means that they have qualified. Have they qualified? Let me tell you right now. Let me tell you right now. Yeah, they're one of the three best. They're, they're third in terms of best teams. Um, uh, so they're, they're third in terms of the, of the third place teams. Netherlands being first with four points, which means they're through. Uh, Slovakia, the only other team, but Slovakia already ahead of them. So that means Slovakia are more or less through as well. Um, the one thing that... Yeah, Slovenia are through. Wait. Yes, Slovenia are through. Slovenia are through. Slovenia are through. So the only thing that could happen is if Czech Republic pull off a result against... Uh, if the Czech Republic pull off a result against... Who are they playing? Against Turkey and win, it would mean that Slovenia are the fourth best third place team which still puts them in the running. So, yeah, they've qualified. I don't know if it's the first time they've qualified round of 16 because they really celebrated it. So I think maybe that's why. But again, very crucial point for them. Puts them through and you can't complain. Yeah, that is my recap for England versus Slovenia. Um, I know I spoke too much about England. I need to talk more about Slovenia because I've actually watched them quite a bit. Um <laughs> Even though this was the most boring group ever, most boring group, like this this game wanted made me want to watch Copa America last night. That's how bad it was. Um, yeah, and if you guys watch Copa America, let me know. I might have I might do a live for one of the games. So yeah, just keep us posted in the comment section. Again, shout out to all the Kenyans. Shout out to all the Patriots that are going to the streets and marching. And yeah, I love you guys. And tomorrow 
We're back there. Peace.